I wanted to welcome everyone to the Design World webinar series. Our webinar today will be Integrated Motion Control, a Machine Builder's Secret Weapon, sponsored by Moog Animatics. Our presenters today will be Hack Summer, the Application Technology Manager at Moog Animatics, and Dan Wiseman, one of the Application Engineers at Moog Animatics. Uh, all questions should be saved to the end. You'll see a little um, display on your right-hand side of the screen that you can ask your questions or type in your questions in there, and uh, we will answer them towards the end of the webinar. So without further ado, I will hand the presentation over to Hack and Dan. All right, just a quick introduction of who we are. Uh, Moog Animatics was founded back in 1987 by uh, Robert Bigler and Panita Pandit as a, an extension of a senior design project at uh, San Jose State University right here in Silicon Valley um, to form a, a newer and easier to use motion controller um, that eventually got uh, integrated into the products that we now uh, uh, sell and uh, support. Uh, we were acquired by Moog Components Group last year, May 2011, and our major claim to fame is we are the first company to manufacture an integrated servo motor. So I'm going to pass it over to Hack Summer to explain what exactly that means and how this can help you in the future. Why would we call fully integrated motion control a secret weapon? The question must be seen in light of how this type of product may be applied. With conventional motion control systems, a control cabinet will typically house the servo drives and controls required to operate the servo motors themselves. Imagine a system that must be compact in size or possibly even tabletop and portable. It would be difficult to make a portable multi-axis machine if that same machine required a large control cabinet full of those servo drives and controls. With a fully integrated motion controller, the tabletop machine would be truly portable. The secret behind it would be in the size of the controls and drives neatly fitted onto the servo motors themselves. As a result, the system would be greatly reduced in size, weight, and cabling complexity, leaving you with a simple, easy to replicate design that results in a competitive advantage. You would not want your competitor knowing how you did it, so that advantage becomes your secret weapon. The same methodology applies to larger machines as well. Given that the control cabinets no longer house all the extra hardware, the cost goes down and the simplicity of the machine makes replication cost lower by lowering labor cost. Truly it is a secret weapon. So as you're building machines and you're integrating motion and motion control into products, there's certain uh, challenges that I'm sure you've seen have come up over and over again. Um, there's machine replication, time and costs, um, being able to produce the machine the first time and get it out the door, being able to fix it up and uh, produce a, a second machine going into full production. There's the human labor component of programming, um, getting the machine to actually perform the way that you want uh, and have an in, uh, interactive and easy to use programming interface. Uh, there's the field service aspect of motion control, being able to go out and actually support the system once it's in the field, being able to upgrade and maintain and add and remove capability as necessary, uh, being able to extend the capability even beyond the number of axes on the machine when it was first built, uh, being able to add additional axes to the machine. These are, these are difficult problems, and these are problems that animatics exists to uh, improve upon and to make uh, less difficult than maybe you've experienced before. Okay, on this slide you'll see uh, you know, what is an integrated uh, motion control and, and any of the ones below can be uh, comprised of being what people would consider an integrated system. You can have a motor plus a drive. This would just be the motor with a drive that has to have some command going to it to tell the motor to go at some speed or position possibly. Motor drive and encoder a little bit more, the encoder means you have feedback. You actually know where you are, whether that encoder being used for velocity feedback or actual position feedback. Then you have a motor drive and controller. A controller may be telling the drive what to do, not necessarily having the encoder to close the loop. Finally, we would have a motor, a drive and encode with encoder and the controller. True closed loop integrated servo control. That's what we provide. 
a fully integrated motion controller on that drive with encoder and motor all in one. Okay, what level of integrated system is needed? Configurable or preset integrated system? Uh, a closed loop preset integrated system? A fully programmable one? Or one that's master capable? Looking at these four different methods, let's, let's think about this for a moment. Configurable or preset integrated system. Truly, that's one that only requires something such as go to this position and back over and over again, or go at this speed all day long. Okay, not much needed there in the way of smarts or an intelligence. It's, it's basically pre-configured, okay? Then you've got a closed loop preset integrated system. The only real difference there is it, it's not open loop. It can actually tell if it actually got to that position or maintained that velocity. There again, a preset system. You set it up for that and it runs. The next step would be fully programmable it actually can make that decision to go at that speed or that position or multiple speeds and positions by a program that's downloaded into it. Finally, you would have one that's master capable, not only being able to make those decisions and being programmable within and of itself, but to go one step further and be able to run other axes or other processes or other machine control within that. And under that master capable design system, you would have designed for distributed control to increase machine performance, where each motor or each integrated control would have the ability to be a coprocessor to the main process, or designed without the extra host controller, where it in fact controls the entire machine. That's the ultimate goal of system integration. It all translate to, what, is, what are the benefits of fully integrated motion control? Uh, compared to your more traditional systems of discrete components, motors, and drives. Uh, well, the machine is going to be a lot quicker and easier to build and replicate uh, by having discrete units that, that sort of integrate to one another like Legos or building blocks. Uh, your machine design time goes down, your construction time goes down, your cabling is greatly simplified. Um, your ability to develop and produce software for the machine, your ability to program the machine is greatly enhanced because you have an entire functional machine um, integrated into the motor that can sit right on your desk. Being able to put the motor or drive system directly on your desk, hook it up to your computer, develop your program, debug it while the larger mechanical system is still in production, you still got parts out of the machine shop, you're still able to debug and produce your um, your programming system uh, all at the same time. So by being able to do, put your efforts in a lot of places at the same time, your, your time in, uh, invested in the system is decreased. By having your systems integrated into the motor, uh, it's a greatly simplified cabling system. There's not cabling running back and forth between I.O. blocks, between drive systems and motors, external encoders. Uh, it's all integrated, so most systems simple I.O. or just power to the motor uh, will suffice. Um, you can easily add axes, you can expand capabilities as the, your system grows and becomes more complicated uh, because they're designed to work together, they're designed to interact with one another and expanding axes becomes very, very easy when you're talking about integrated motion control with animatics. Lastly, um, simplifying field service, by having a motor on your shelf they can fit anywhere in the system. You can have one that's pre-programmed uh, to detect its position in the system and automatically pick up right where one left off. You're talking about decreased downtime. You're talking about decreased money loss in the event of a failure. Uh, you're talking about increased productivity at that point. And that's something that uh, works well for system users and system developers. So I'm sure you've seen basic integrated drive systems um, but what, what if that's not enough? What if you need more than just your positioning and, and torque moves of a motor? You don't need to go just back and forth. What about communicating directly to the motor rather than some centralized system and saving bandwidth that way? What about I.O., analog, digital I.O., 5-volt, 24-volt I.O.? What about gearing and camming? What about advanced mathematics, trigonometric functions? What if you need all of that at the same time? With an advanced integrated motion control, it would be nice to be able to have these multiple facets of capabilities. For example, in this slide, you will see gearing and camming 
two things that are often done, but they're often done in conjunction with position or velocity moves on top of that. What we have here is the need for dual trajectory paths. We have gearing or camming running on one trajectory, and yet we may need to move or phase shift on top of that. So the capability here is to be able to take position moves or velocity moves summed in and yet separate from the gearing process. This allows the motor to do complicated motion profiles in a very simplistic form integrated in a small package. Here's an example of dual trajectory where velocity is being summed in on top of electronic gearing. On the right side, you'll see a master nip roller. What's happening is the product is fed through these nip rollers and the encoder output from that master motor is fed back to a slave supply reel. That supply reel must maintain the proper speed regardless of how it depletes in diameter over the life of its uh, spinning or, or supplying product out there. And you'll see a dancer arm in between that helps with tension control. Now, if that slave reel is electronically gearing, you would have to compensate for the change in radius over time. You would do that by dancer arm velocity compensation on top of gearing. As the uh, reel depletes, it should be going faster, so we feed more and more velocity back in through dual trajectory on that slave reel. So, and in fact, the master nip roller is only running one mode of operation, possibly constant velocity, whereas the slave reel is truly running velocity on top of gearing. Uh, in this next slide, you'll see phase adjust mode listed, and on the right, you'll see a few pictures and snapshots of a video we're about to show. It will be where gearing is used for a phase offset adjust to basically take gyro compensation into a pan and tilt. And then on top of that, position mode can be used to direct the camera in this pan and tilt in a specific point. So let's go ahead and start that video. Okay, as can be seen, there's two camera shots. This is actually on a single pan and tilt, as you saw in the prior snapshot on the screen, where the left camera is being compensated and the right camera is not. The left camera is running in position mode, holding steady on the position. However, in electronic gearing, it's feeding in a compensation by gyro stabilization. As a result, that camera can man maintain proper position control on the horizon regardless of the change in vehicle motion underneath it. You'll see on the right side, it's moving quite sporadically. When it reaches a hill, an incline, or a decline, it bumps erratically up and down. It's only in position mode, yet the one on the left, with the gearing compensation underneath, you see it maintains a more fluid operation throughout the entire process. As a result, the dual trajectories allow compensation under a position mode to maintain position properly. So many systems out in the field, you've got more than one motor, more than a couple motors that need to be uh, moving in sync, communicating with one another. Um, and when you talk about a conventional multi-axis system, you usually have a host computer or PLC um, that is sort of a, a master controlling um, unintelligent motors to insert positions, velocities, and, and coordinate everything in a central position. Uh, what we offer is a technology called Combatronic which is much more distributed. Uh, you're going to be getting a system where any motor can act as the master of the system, and any motor on the system can command uh, to or from any other motor on the system. So you have uh, a system where all motors are independently aware of all other motors, uh, position, velocity, acceleration, variables, mathematics, uh, even I.O. from one motor to the next. So in Combatronic, you have a lot of benefits. You can easily add additional axes to the system um, simply by stringing the motors together. Um, you have a lower cabling cost because the way the system is set up, you only need to run cabling from one motor to the next. Without having a centralized uh, system, there's no need to run cabling back to a, a control cabinet or anything of that nature. Simply from one motor to the next, uh, power and communications, and you're ready to go. Uh, your field service is greatly simplified by being able to replace any motor in the system um, and having a program set up such that it'll be able to know its own place in the system and act accordingly. Um, and many systems you can completely remove a control cabinet entirely uh, and allow the motion profiles being generated 
inside the motor to control all motion in the system. And this is a demo that we set up to show uh, just how powerful Combatronic is. This is 14 motors uh, right there, they're all homed, and then it runs this wave routine. You've got coordinated motion over 14 axes, uh, waits for the wave routine to finish, and then does a few moves of coordinated motion back and forth there. Uh, you'll notice that all the moves are starting and stopping at the same time. All those uh, calculations for motion are being done in the motors in real time. Uh, this is also to show how uh, simple and uh, effortless the, the cabling and setup of a smart motor system can be. Uh, the code was done in about an hour, just a lunch break project. All the cabling was completed over about 10 minutes. So you can see that the, um, uh, by using smart motors and using animatics technology, you can have a very complex system, uh, but have it put together very quickly and very simply. Okay, linear and cubic spline interpolation. We are capable of making linear interpolation stand alone, but one thing further is to be able to do curve, curve linear, or some, some other deviated path other than straight point to point in multiple axes. Okay, complex motion from small amounts of data, instead of having a large table data, what we can do is take cubic spline interpolation to bend the curve over minimum points of data and give you a smooth path, smooth transitions such as in CNC applications. We can take that and run it as a CAM profile and put complex CAM motion and short CAM tables downloaded to the motor to do this fully standalone. So let's just take a couple of videos as an example. Okay, let's take this. It's a three-axis linear interpolation demo showing a few smart motors on one specific load. In this case, it's pushing about 90 pounds a load. Uh, it's, it's showing our new synchronized PTS and PRTS, both position target and position relative target, command structure. In this, what we've done is we've commanded one motor, the base x-axis, to control all other axes. In this case, you can see a linear move in x, y, and z moving quite a heavy load and doing it quite precisely. This is standard linear interpolation, standalone, all done by one of these motors being master to all other motors. Okay, now in the video you'll see us switch over to cam mode. At first it was just linear interpolation. What I wanted to do was show a cam table downloaded to provide the ability to show true coordinated paths and a curved linear path. And in this case what, what it will be is basically circular interpolation through electronic camming. A virtual master or virtual encoder will be the feed into each cam table on each axis. So now it's now as we see this, the motor, the, the, the x-axis master motor is commanding each one to start its cam table and move and result in a true three-axis circular interpolation. You can see the z-axis moving up and down slightly with that. Okay, in this video, you'll see a small x-y-axis going through a given pattern. We have a small laser pointer on there, and if you look closely, you can see the dot moving on top of existing traces. There again, the motor is simply going through a couple of linear interpolation moves, and then we go back through and do a few other moves downloaded by, in this case, electronic camming. But you can see it going through various motions. There it's going in an XY pattern back and forth. And then finally it's going in here and uh, a little bit closer here. See the laser on top of the line showing good repeatability. And then it goes through and does a cam table circular interpolation. You can see it following that same path that it drew earlier. What we did is we placed an ink pen down there, and then later we showed the laser pointer pointing on top of that. Good repeatability, good control, dual axis control from a single axis being a master, running electronic camming and virtual axis master in each cam table. Now these motors can store multiple cam tables and we can recall any one of these cam tables at any time so multiple paths can be stored at the same time. As you can see the same path can be sped up or slowed down. Now we're running the same exact circular interpolation a little bit faster. So even though it's off of a virtual axis 
We're not actually changing the speed of the axis. We're changing the multiplier on top of that. Finally, you can see a few more patterns we've done here. The motor is precise at running uh, a uh, sinusoidal wave back and forth. This also shows you can use it in oscillation type products, such as a welding oscillator or anything that scans back and forth over time. Electronic traverse and take up winding, for example. Okay, we were tasked with trying to work with a uh, non-contact laser displacement sensor to measure the distance out beyond the axis. Okay, as you can see here, moving a piece of paper back and forth, there's a laser that, point, that tech checks the distance out and the motor follows that distance of the laser. It is dynamic and it's active. What this was used for was packaging application where they wanted to go out press against the package to press a label on and then retract back out of the way. In this portion of the video you can see where a package is placed down, the actuator moves out to just above the surface and backs away. The time it stays down there would be the time to actually place a label on that package. There again, place the package out there, go down, come back up, non-contact, the laser displacement sensor feeds the signal into the motor, the intelligence, of the, uh, intelligence of the motor allows it to properly position itself and then retract back out of the way. At this point, we showed dynamic capabilities of this. Constantly moving over a surface, we can now follow the contour of a surface. This could be for vision inspection, for cutting, such as torch height control. This could also be for spraying a surface. Uh, thermal forming surfaces where you have to spray over a coating on top of that. Here you have a backwards axis, uh, excuse me, a, a back Z axis and a front Z axis. And what I want you to see is that the front Z axis actually looks at the surface and follows it while the back Z axis independently moves up and down. This shows multiple axes moving at the same time. You have your left, right, or Y axis moving back and forth while you have the z-axis moving up and down and yet the end effector axis still maintains proper distance off the contoured surface. Okay, imagine a very high axis count machine, 1,008 axes. We had an application where the customer wanted to do some kinetic art sculpture. In this case, it appears to be a field of balls floating in the air that make a shape as if a surface is, is being manipulated in midair. Okay, what we're going to do is show a video of this. Keeping in mind the sheer size of this is quite large. It's about 45 feet high, uh, you know, 60 feet wide or so, and it even has dancers that will perform underneath it. And at this point, we'll start the video. Okay, as you can see here, move, as it says, moving one load is simple, or one, one axis is simple, but imagine hundreds of axes, in this case, a thousand axes. This was achieved only through the ability of having each motor intelligent enough to deal with its own motion without the interference of the adjacent motor. A host controller would send out the positions to each motor through a data packet from a single bus structure out to all axes. In this case, the uh, bus structure happened to be an update milli uh, of 32 milliseconds and data packet to all axes at the same time. Okay, we had to provide a means to do this in a space savings and reduced cost method to where it was easy to build up, easy to maintain. The motors were built up in arrays. You can see the arrays of motors chained together, all tied in with simple point cabling. Here is an assembly operation where their first dealing with it prior to, to shipment overseas to where this would be used. You can see the machine the, the uh, machine setup is quite high. Moved over to the uh, country that needed this for a, for a large World Fair exposition. The motors were placed in grids overhead, then they were tested out, lifted up, and put through a full display testing ahead of time. As you can see, it was quite fluid motion so much so that it gave you the presence of a full 3D control of some object in the air. There again, all the motors had the intelligence to deal with it on their own. We did, as you see, had an integrated brake on here, so if power was lost, they would hold position. Through all these uh, data packets, we can manipulate each motor individually or banks of motor all at once. 
to give different motion effects. Some of the motors had cam tables built into them to where you could call these cam tables for offsets for predefined motion. Otherwise, it's live and dynamic motion profile transmitted down from the host controller. Now, this could not be easily achieved with a standard non-integrated product because the amount of sheer space and size to put over a thousand drive amplifiers would have been far in excess with a standard conventional setup. We would have had to have rack mount cabinets over top with cooling fans and more. With this process, all the motors were just tied together in small groups, cabled off to power supplies for each subgroup, and a single bus communications protocol tying them all together. Finally, this thing was put into the real world application out there with performers underneath it running live in front of an audience. Worked quite well. I honestly don't think a non-integrated a, a non system or a conventional system would have been able to, uh, to do this quite as well. It operated quickly, smoothly, fastly with precision and repeatability. Now one of the more common multi-axis applications we'll see for uh, servo motors will be uh, CNC or um, CNC-like applications where uh, you operate in a three-dimensional space and you do form parts. It could be plasma cutting, it could be CNC milling, wood routing, glue dispensing, uh, things of that nature. And what we've done is we've actually developed a uh, CNC package for the smart motors uh, that will allow you to take a simple three-axis XYZ uh, and even with a few auxiliary axes up to six axes and create a CNC system for it. Um, it'll interpret uh, two-dimensional drawings, DXFs, uh, or if you have up to a six-axis G-code file generated from your own uh, CAD CAM program, it can interpret that as well. Um, so by having everything integrated, by having a software package just designed to work with it, you're looking at reduced time to market, you're looking at very rapid machine replication, and we've, uh, as I said, seen it in very many industries from plasma cutting, surfboard forming, and glue dispensing. So I've got a video showing um, a surfboard forming machine and let me pull that up. This is a video for a surfboard manufacturer in California um, where they wanted to automate the production of foam surfboards uh, and they've got a smart motor based system uh, very long axis being able to produce these 8 and 10 foot long surfboards uh, using internally produced animatics actuators that run back and forth. Uh, they simply can load a CAD file uh, into their CAM program generate G code and send that directly to the motors and be able to produce a prototype very, very rapidly. Um, due to the simplicity of the system, um, by having all the motors and motor electronics integrated, um, the fact that you're generating a lot of dust and a lot of particulate matter is not, uh, not a big deal. Uh, the motors stay clean uh, and we have a reliable performance even in an undesirable environment. That concludes our webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, in front of you, you'll see our contact information. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact us at any time.